The S&P 500, after hitting some record highs, has actually started to fall down a little bit slightly. So now we've got to wonder, can we get to 2,500 before the end of the summer? Today, we're joined by Boris Schlossberg and Craig Johnson here on Trading Nation. First, let's go to Craig. When you look at those charts, what do you think it's telling you as far as this S&P 500 move? Well, if you look at the chart of the S&P 500 I brought in, you can see that over the, really this year, we've just been making base on base type advances, which is you move up, you consolidate a little bit, you make another move up and you continue higher. The market right now is uh, making all time new highs and uh, we've set a year end price objective, which we just raised. We were at 24.24 at year end for 2017, but we bumped that up to 25.75 for year end of 2017. So we're still bullish on this market. We still think there's more room to go. And one other thing I would just add is just sentiment toward this market. There's been so many negative stories, negative things that have occurred. We've heard all the things that can go wrong with this market, but it's making all time new highs. So clearly this is a bullish market and the trend is still up. And any little dips that we may get over the summer months, we want to be buying those dips because at this point in time, uh, you know, the S&P is speaking and certainly the trend is up right now. Boris, do you agree with Craig's thesis that you want to be buying dips here into the summer? So I know the cardinal rule of investing is to never fade the trend, but I can't help but think <clears throat> that this market is going to run into a wall of economic reality. We just don't have the economic data to support this continuous upward trend in the market. This market reminds me very much of the summer of 1987 when it was just a Teflon market. Nothing could bring it down and then swoosh. It dropped in one fell swoop. I don't think we're going to have a crash, but I do think it's flashing a lot of warning signs, especially because even though it's creeping up, there's a big divergence between momentum, the pace of its, of its rise, and its rise. And I think that's the first sign, perhaps, that we're due for a correction. But like Craig just talked about, everyone thought many months ago that we were going to see just a lot more volatility. You think about just go back to November. Everyone said Trump's right. going to win. Big volatility, huge right. correction. We didn't see that. And now we're getting all-time highs. Like Craig said, no matter what's happened, that's happening. So I don't know. I'm just going to let you two argue it out here, and I'll just stay <laughs> out of it and figure out what's going to happen. Well, I think it's very, very difficult to predict the timing and the catalyst of what's going to drive the market down. But I'm simply arguing from a, from a point of caution. Even if you don't necessarily want to get yourself out of the market, I think it's very wise to protect yourself with some put options going forward. Because we're going now into a negative seasonal time, um, basically August, September, October, when the market is due for some turbulence. There is a lot of turbulence in Washington, D.C. that has not been accounted for yet. And we just don't know what could hit it. Um, as far as valuation, it's very hard to make a case right now that we have unimpeded growth in the second half of the year. In fact, the U.S. consumer seems to be retrenching not expanding despite the strong labor uh, labor market and I think all those signs are kind of troubling if you're trying to make a in, intelligent investment decision right now Craig you got to jump in there I, I, yeah I guess I'd come back and I'd say a couple other things to take into consideration one if you look at the earning side of this pretty soon here we're going to be rolling out the 2018 numbers and if you look at where those numbers are right now you're looking for 10 percent growth and that's before any sort of repatriation, any sort of tax bills get done. Those numbers could be higher than people think. I think at this point in time, this market is held up at a higher multiple in anticipation, kind of betting on the cum, shall we say, that the 2018 numbers are going to be higher than people realize. I'd also just mention structurally, there's 25% fewer stocks today in the market than there was back in 2000. Yet the market cap has gone from 18 trillion to about 38 and change trillion. More money keeps going into a fewer number of stocks, and a lot of those are very good, high quality stocks. I mean, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, good quality stocks that are going to be around for a while. So, again, I still want to be buying any dips that I see out there at this point in time, and I want to stay along the trend. So, and real I quick, throw it to Boris. Craig yeah. mentioned a 2575 year end target for the SP. If you had to put a target on, what are you looking at? It sounds like you're saying zero. Based on what you're talking about, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying zero, but I'm saying less. Um, I, I think the key thing, the key point of um, distinction between him and I is I don't think 2018 is going to be as optimistic as the market is projecting. And once that reality begins to hit the market, you'll see a correction uh, going forward. That's the big difference. I don't see the U.S. consumer and U.S. corporates really lifting to this 10% uh, earnings per share growth. And the fact that we have more money going into less stocks 
is not a good sign to me. It's actually a sign of more uh, volatility and um, extreme, which could then resolve itself negatively uh, in a big correction. So I'm just wary, um, even though I know it's been very, very hard to short this market, which has been in a continuous move up over the last few months. Anything else, Craig, last word, or you're good? I would just simply add here, kind of a final just kind of note, is that if you look back to a lot of the big bull markets in history, they've been driven by very few number of stocks, in some cases two or three stocks. This time, we got the FANG stock, so we've got five-plus stocks that are driving this market higher. So it represents about 12% uh, of the overall capitalization of the S&P 500 right now, and I think those good quality stocks are going to continue to get bought on dips. All right, well, it's an easy one. We can check this out December 31st. The three of us, we get together. We just review who is right and who is wrong. Exactly. My thanks to Boris and Craig for joining me here on Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi, and we'll catch you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.